In this video, we will be looking at how to lightweight a simple lever arm using the topology optimization functionality in Fusion 360. We will begin by running a topology optimization simulation on our part. We will then use these results to create a realistic, manufacturable part by promoting our simulation results back into the modeling workspace and superimposing them over our initial model. Finally, we will extrude away material from the initial model based on the results of our top-op simulation. We will begin with a simple lever arm part which can be found in the simulation sample models included as part of your Fusion 360 package. We will head straight to the simulation workspace to set up our initial simulation. The new study window will already be open and we will select Shape Optimization Study. We're now ready to define our material, constraints, loads, and mesh size, as well as a few other parameters. To select our material, we'll click on the material icon. We'll continue with the part's predefined steel material. We will now apply constraints by clicking on the structural constraints icon. Based on the functionality of this part, we'll need to apply pin constraints to the two pin holes on the lever. To do so, we will select the inside of each pin hole and change our constraint type to pin. We will now add our simulated load to the model by clicking on the load icon. We will select the front face where the load is applied and set the load's magnitude to a predetermined 500 newtons. Now because our simulation will ultimately remove material from our model, we must ensure that material remain present around certain crucial functional areas of the model. In this model, it is imperative that we have material around the two pinholes. To apply this constraint to our simulation, we'll use the Preserve Regions functionality. We will preserve the first region by selecting the inside of the larger hole and setting the boundary radius to 8 millimeters. This will ensure that no material within 8 millimeters of the hole is removed by the simulation. We'll repeat this process for the smaller hole, this time setting a 6 millimeter boundary radius. Next, because our model is symmetrical across the horizontal plane, we will want our lightweighted version to achieve the same symmetry. We will do so by selecting the Symmetry Plane option under the Shape Optimization Tools. We will select the horizontal face to define our horizontal symmetry plane. Now in order to acquire helpful, accurate results, we need to ensure that our mesh size is relatively small. We will do so by selecting Settings and going to Mesh Settings. We will decrease our mesh size from about 5% to about 2%. We are now ready to run our topology optimization simulation. The green pre-check icon indicates that we are ready to go. We will now click Solve to solve our simulation on the cloud. This can be helpful when running larger simulations. Simulations on the cloud can take anywhere from a few seconds to a few hours, so we will skip ahead to view our results. Right now, we're looking at the load path criticality results. We can adjust the slider to view more or less critical areas of the part. You can begin to see here how these results can be used to inform the design of an improved part. We'll set our slider such that our lightweight version has about half the original mass of the part. Although these results provide helpful insight, they often cannot be used literally as they are more organic in nature and cannot be manufactured with typical methods other than additive manufacturing. If we wanted to, say, laser cut or mill this part, we have to make further updates to the model itself based on these results provided by the simulation. We will do so by promoting our results back into the modeling workspace. This will allow us to directly modify the original part based on our results. We'll go to Results and click Promote. Now you can see that our simulation results have been superimposed over our original model. To update the model directly based on these results, we will create a new sketch on the top face. We will begin by hand sketching a series of contours in response to the areas of material removal provided by the simulation. 
We will then apply a series of parallel constraints, dimensions, and fillets to create a uniform, easy to manufacture part. Because this video is not focused on the sketching tools in Fusion 360, I will skip ahead to the completed sketch. Now we have our final sketch contour. Again, for the sake of time, I skipped over the application of constraints and dimensions on the sketch. If you have questions regarding Fusion sketching tools and processes, please visit the Fusion Learning Database online to find a plethora of additional demonstrational content. We will extrude away material by clicking the Create icon. This defaults to an extrusion. We will select each profile, set the distance to through all, and flip the direction, which defaults to a cut extrusion. Now that we have removed material from our original model, we can hide our mesh body to view the updated part. We've improved this part significantly, reducing the weight by about 50%. Additional analyses and updates to the part can be made from here.